in this show, some introductions and how my first pipe got a second chance. Hello pipe community, this is Bear Pipe and welcome to my new channel. In this channel we're going to be experimenting with and exploring pipe restoration. I want to take old abandoned and neglected pipes, I want to strip them down to their bare essence and learn how to repair and fix them and then send them back out into the world with a new life. And uh, as part of that theme, I want to tell you about my first pipe because that's the pipe that I started doing this with. Uh, I picked up smoking in 96 during the cigar boom, started smoking cigars, and uh, within a short period of time realized that I was more attracted to the smell of pipe tobacco than I was to the smell of cigars. So needless to say, I bought a pipe. Now, initially, you know, for the first year, I probably boiled my tongue like a sausage. Uh, and, and yeah, just I just burned the living daylights out of it while I was trying to learn this. It took me a long time to figure out how to smoke a pipe. And uh, the pipe that I bought was a relatively average smoker. It was not a great smoker. A few years later, I, I was traveling through Europe and landed in London. And during transit, my pipe had broken in my bag. The stem had been snapped off. So this was a bit of a disaster. And this is my only pipe, and I'm now pipeless. So when I got back to Canada, went to the tobacconist, showed him the pipe, said, can you do something about this? And, uh, and he said, yeah, absolutely. It's not a problem. We can have a new stem made. So they sent it off somewhere. A couple of months later, it arrived back with a new stem. I was all excited. I'm going to go pick my pipe up. I haven't smoked the pipe for two months at that point, waiting for the pipe to come back. And it was a bit of a disappointment. Uh, when I got it back and, and the reason was that they had left it worse than it was before um, and I'll show you the pipe um, this is the pipe as it looks today and um, when I got the pipe back in order to fit the new stem they had to sand off the edge of the shank uh, and had stripped the varnish, varnish down maybe a quarter of an inch wide so this end of the pipe was nice and shiny and I had a dull bit in the middle with bare wood and then I had a stem at the back end. It looked terrible. Besides that, the draft hole in the stem was pretty small. So small that it made the pipe whistle and it made the pipe smoke even hotter than it was already smoking. So I started thinking, there's got to be something I can do about this. And uh, so I thought, oh, why don't I just sand down the pipe? It's already half sanded. It's not going to get any worse than that. So I sanded it down and then I discovered something else. I discovered that it had some flaws in it along the surface. And it turns out that Capital Briar, which was the make of the pipe, was the Savinelli Seconds line. And I don't think it's a very well known line at all. In fact, I've never heard of a Capital Briar other than the one that I have. But what Savinelli did was, is when, when the pipe was you know, not meeting their aesthetic standards uh, in terms of the exterior with little bug holes and flaws, they would send it into the seconds line. They would fill the flaws, varnish the pipe, and send it out into the world as a cheap pipe. Now, luckily for me, it meant that this was really good quality briar, except that it had some aesthetic flaws on the exterior. And... Uh, once I sanded it down, I had to live with the flaws, of course, but I discovered that it smoked a lot better. The smoke was cooler, the tobacco was tastier, and I never realized how big an influence the varnish on the surface of this pipe had on the quality of the smoke. And it turned the pipe into literally like a little hot box, and uh, it was just cooking the tobacco inside. So for a while, I smoked it just unfinished like this, bare, and uh, just looked at the at the flaws, which was all out on the surface. But after a while, I thought, you know, I'd, I'd like to finish what I started. And uh, I, I have a bit of an interest in, uh, in a Japanese technique of repairing things called kintsugi. Oh, I think that's how you pronounce it. It's probably the wrong way that I've <laughs> Don't be offended if you're Japanese. Uh, and, and it's a philosophy that says that you don't, you don't hide flaws and you don't hide breakages in things that gets damaged. You actually celebrate it and you make it better. 
And the way that you do that is by filling it with a metal, uh, gold or copper or silver or something. It's usually used in pottery. So I thought I could use this technique and do the filling uh, with brass so that it looks like little gold flakes instead of hiding the, the flaws. And then I stained it and I waxed it. And I'm quite happy with how it came out. And, and you won't be able to see the, the copper filling, or, or sorry, the brass filling that I've done on it. But I'll put a, a close-up video in just to show you uh, what it looks like. And there's a couple of spots. There's a, there's a spot on top. Uh, there's some spots in here on the, on the side of the bowl and on the shank where I had to do that. But the end result was a pipe that I thought looks way better than it ever did. And, uh, and that's the thing about these things. A, a pipe is not just a pipe. A, a pipe embodies a whole bunch of history that comes with it. Uh, the things that you've done with it, and uh, the things you've done to it, in my case with this pipe, it all comes together and, and you take that with you when you smoke the pipe and it gives you a deeper quality of experience. And, and that embodied history that goes with this briar is a really important part of the, the quality of pipe smoking, especially with estate pipes, pipes that's come down through generations and that has had more than one owner. There's the history of the previous owner, and, and you think about it, if you look after it, you could be sending that pipe along to somebody else in the future. And, and that's really what this channel is about, is I want to take these old neglected pipes, you can buy batches of them on eBay for next to nothing. And, and there was a period of time in the 20th century when pipes were cheap. They gave them away in some restaurants at the end of a meal. And uh, you can buy some of those pipes today on eBay. They know name brands or relatively cheap brands from, from, from the time in the, in the mid-20th century. And I think there's potential to, to what was relatively averagely made pipes to turn them into something that has some craftsmanship to it, and to repair them and to send them back out into the world. So join me on the journey, please. And uh, if you like, subscribe, like the video. And thank you for watching.